All right, guys, this week we're going to be taking a look at creating your very own guitar cab impulses. Um, we're also going to be taking a viewer question and talking about the latency that you're going to get out of the M Audio Fast Track Pro. And I'm going to be taking you inside of Reaper and showing you how to use the time stretching feature to quantize uh, your audio tracks. And that's all coming up on episode number 76 of Limitless Studios TV. All right, guys, this week we're going to try and take you through step by step the creation of uh, guitar cab impulses. And for those of you who may not know, a guitar cab impulse is just a uh, technique that you use to emulate the sound of a cab. And you put that impulse into some sort of uh, impulse loader, and you're going to get the, uh, the actual emulated sound of the cab. And we're going to tell you how to create that. Um, some things you're going to need, you're going to need a guitar amp with an effects loop or a power amp input. Um, you're going to need a program called Voxingo Deconvolver. And there's a trial version of this, but it only allows you to do three impulses at a time. And then you have to restart the program. Or you can buy it for the unlimited version. I'm not sure how much it is, but... It's like $40 or something. Yeah. Um, you are going to need a quarter inch balanced cable. Um, you can use a regular guitar cable, but it's recommended a uh, balanced cable. Yep. Um, then you're going to need the mic that you're going to uh, create the impulse with, and obviously set it to the position on the cab that you find um, most appealing. And then you're going to need an audio interface uh, with uh, mic preamps and uh, quarter inch line outputs. And lastly, you're going to need some sort of recording software. Yep. So the first thing you're going to do to uh, start making these impulses is uh, first connect all your connections from uh, your interface to your amp. So you're going to connect the quarter inch of one of the ends of the balance cable to your line output on the interface. And in this case, we're, I'm using the Fast Track Ultra and using output three. Um, and then you're going to connect the other end of that TRS cable to your effects return on your amp or you can use a power amp input like we said earlier. After you do that, you're going to open up Vox & Go Deconvolver. Um, the link to the download will be in the description box. Um, and then you're going to create a sine wave from that program. At the bottom, there's a, there's a box that says Test, Test Tone Gen, and you're going to click that and generate a sound sine wave from uh, this, this program at 24-bit 44.1 kilohertz. You're going to make it 12 second duration and it's going to be a mono sine wave. Um, and also remember don't to connect or don't check the apply fade in and out for reverse um, because that can cause some uh, problems with the impulse. Um, and then after you've done all that, click generate and it will generate a sine wave to uh, wherever you wanted to save it at. Now after you Create this sine wave, you're going to import it into your DAW, whatever you're using. Um, I'm using Pro Tools here. Um, you can use Reaper, anything like that. Um, and then once you set that, uh, import that sine wave, you're going to uh, set that to go out to the uh, effects return on your amp. And after you send it out to your amp, you're going to record that signal. So you're going to set the output to the effects return and then record the signal from your mic position. And obviously you've got to place the mic um, to whatever desirable location you, you want. Um, we usually do four or five different mic positions that we have pretty much the whole speaker contained. And then after you create that, uh, after you record that sine wave, you're going to export that sine wave down as a wave file and you can call it whatever you want. But uh, after you do that, you're going to open Vox & Go Deconvolver back up again. And there's two file slots in there at the top of the, the dialog box. The first one is labeled Test Tone File, and the second one, which is right below it, is labeled File Folder. Uh, in the first uh, slot, you're going to browse to your sine wave. You're going to click the Browse button on the side and go to wherever you created the sine wave at and load that into the slot and then the one below that is the file folder you're going to click browse again and go to your exported sine wave that you recorded with your microphone 
and uh, click open on that. And then lastly, go down to the bottom of the, the program and uh, there's some options that you want to set. You want to set the output depth to 24 bit and check the MP transform and normalize to negative 0.3 dB FS checkboxes and then you're going to click process. And after you click that process button, it's going to create a impulse file, which will probably have at the end of the name underscore DC for whatever reason. And um, it's going to create that impulse file in whatever folder you want. And then you can load that impulse into your impulse loader. So that's basically how you create an impulse. Hopefully those directions were somewhat explanatory. Yep, and uh, we've actually created some impulses that we're going to post on our forum. Yep. So, and if you actually haven't joined the forum, um, you can, you know, join there and post all your questions, all your mixes, and we get feedback from uh, the people that have, we've got like tons of them, we've got like 600 members or something like that. Yep. So uh, now we're going to go on to a viewer question, and we get this a ton, and we get it in the chat room a lot, and we get it in YouTube comments. And it's about the Fast Track Pros, the M Audio Fast Track Pro, the latency when recording. And uh, I'm just going to go through some things that I do with the Fast Track Pro. Um, the main one that I always like to, uh, to cite is when I have an electronic drum kit, I have a Yamaha DTS Express 3 Special Edition. And I run the MIDI out out of the DTS Express module into the MIDI in on the Fast Track Pro. From there, I run that into either Superior Drummer or Steven Slate Drums, and that's where my drums are processed. Then out from the Fast Track Pro comes my headphones, so I can hear what I'm playing, and I can't tell the difference between that and playing acoustic drums. So to me, it sounds like zero latency, and when you're playing drums, and if you've ever played drums with latency before, which I used to do on my old interface, uh, it sounds terrible, and you get completely off time, but with the Fast Track Pro, I have no latency at all. I'm sure there's latency, but there's no audible latency um, when playing drums. Yep. And same thing for uh, recording DIs or mics or anything like that. I don't have any problems with, uh, with latency. I think it has a lot more to do with your CPU and your computer rather than the actual interface. Um, at least that's what I've found. So no, no problems with uh, Fast Track Pro latency. Yep. And uh, now I think we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, the time stretching feature inside of Reaper. So let's check that out. All right, guys, we are back inside of Reaper. And this week I'm going to show you how to uh, use the time stretching feature, which is going to be useful in uh, quantizing things um, such as drums or your guitar DIs to make sure that they're perfectly aligned um, with your double track. Um, here I actually have two different bass tracks and as you can see this top one I actually moved over for this demonstration so you can see that this note is nowhere anywhere close to this note. Now I am zoomed in pretty far so in reality you're not really going to be able to tell that much difference but when you get them dead on time you will be able to tell a difference. So uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to cut the beginning and the end of this note so make sure you are not on uh, the snap and if you are on snap you're just going to hit alt s and that will allow you to go anywhere in the project and you're going to click at the beginning of that note and you're going to hit uh, the key command s that's going to split it at the beginning and then you're going to go down here to the end of the note and you click you're going to split it now reaper automatically adds crossfades which gets rid of the popping noises you will hear in uh, if you don't have the crossfades um, so if, maybe if you have an older version of Reaper, it won't do that, but I have a fair, I have 2.5, so uh, um, in that version it crossfades for you. Um, now there's two different ways to go about doing this that I found. You can either cut the beginning of the note before it, um, which would be right here, which is what I usually do, and then stretch both of these, or you cannot do that and just cut out um, some of the sound that's right here. So I'll show you that way first, which is not the way I recommend. But you just click on this part and you drag it back. back. Now that's actually deleting information. That's actually getting rid of the sound. And then 
you can take this, hold down Alt, which is going to stretch the note, and come over here to align it to the grid. That's the first way to do it. Now, that might be a little faster, but I've found that sometimes you can get some weird stuff going on when you cut a note, or you cut sound out of a note. So that's not the way I would recommend. I am going to undo that, and I'm going to come over here and cut the beginning of this note. I'm going to hit S. Now the reason you want to do that is because if you stretched the beginning without cutting the note before it, you're going to stretch the entire track all the way back to the beginning, and so the whole track is going to be off time. So you want to make sure you cut the note before it, so it only stretches that. Now what you can do is you can go to the center of both of these, hold down Alt, and it's going to stretch this one back. And as you can see, the audio is actually stretching. It's not deleting anything. So you're going to pull that back to the uh, grid, and then you're going to pull this one up to the grid. And now they are both aligned, and you will have a perfectly aligned track with this bottom track. So hopefully that helped you out if you guys were wanting to manually quantize things. And uh, we will see you next week in another episode of Limitless Studios TV.